Uh, okay, let me then later let me do the technical stuff and you just do the thing that you hate most in this life, which is a small talk. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to this very nice Monday where we're gonna talk about emotional health and an app for it. And uh, it's sort of an interesting thing of where we are now and the problems that we, the world, have to fix with our minds while sitting at home. And let's see if Karelis from Emotica can help us and uh, what this um, and what this Emotica app does. And uh, currently it's in Lithuania, is going global soon. And there are many more details. So we're going to talk about emotional health. We're going to talk about uh, learning. We're going to talk about um, courses and trainers and their YouTube channel and their podcast and all the good things they do. But first, we're going to introduce ourselves. Oh no, even better. But first, we're going to thank our sponsors and our partners. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Startup Lithuania, for helping with the streams. Thank you, Startup Brands, for making this all possible. And uh, I'm Ole. I'm here doing the technical things, juggling streams, and uh, talking to people. Yes. So I'm Lara, just in case. And I'm the community manager, artist, and I have a lot of things in life, actually. But all glory goes to Oleg. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but, uh, Karolis, let's talk about yourself and the glory that goes to you. Yeah, but c can you talk about yourself by yourself? Because Alec always saying some bullshit, <laughs> so... <laughs> this stream is not family safe. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so I can I can quickly introduce myself. My name is Karolis. I'm a co-founder and uh, uh, chief product officer of Emotica, which is a micro-learning platform that helps organizations to effortlessly assess and uh, uh, effectively train uh, employee mm -hmm. soft skills. Uh, before doing that, I spent 10 years in the corporations, uh, was a director of technology, doing cool stuff in different markets, uh, except of work, which is also still the case, fortunately. I, I used to love traveling and reading books. Uh, now I'm spending my uh, summer in... Uh, uh, Palangai, actually. So last year I learned kite surfing. Since I cannot do surfing and travel the world, hopefully we'll resume that soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much about me. And on your LinkedIn page, there is something about Stanford. I'm trying to understand what that is. It's yes. time to boast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, being in that tech industry, I'm, you know, I'm also a lifelong learner. So last time I was... Uh, I was training my skills somewhere externally it was quite a long time ago. And uh, so basically uh, this March, so you know, a few weeks ago, I just started a one year executive education program in Stanford. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna upskill myself for the year now. And so, you know, from one hand side, you know, learning from the best in class institution and the uh, and the network is one. And on the other hand side, then reapplying all that to build my own best in class, uh, you know, product speaking about the Motica. So I see a lot of synergies and, you know, the opportunities to develop. So, so, so yes, that's what I do as well. So can you tell a little bit more about the Motica? What is it? How you, like, why you started doing this? For what? How did you come up with the, with the idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, so in general, before doing that, I was, you know, like I, I found my passion in building uh, digital products, uh, built uh, quite of a few products with like millions of active users in the markets like US, Japan, Germany, and similar uh, for one big corporation. So I was, I didn't, I basically, I was out of Lithuania for the last 10 years and actually traveling all, traveling all over the world. And so the time came when I, you know, got the experience and I wanted to shift. Uh, and uh, I think back in 2018, end of 2018, I was I, I was back in Lithuania for uh, for one uh, Verslo Gino uh, sales conference, doing the doing the keynote about uh, technology in sales. And I uh, and, and there I met my co-founder Darius. So basically, he had this idea about you know training emotional competence through the 
uh, through digital tools, and he needed uh, he asked for my help to consult him on how you know what what are the good ways, what are the best practices, how how he could do that. And so then I said, you know what? Let me actually join you and let's do it together properly. It's not that you need a consultancy; you need the skill set to get uh, to get this successful. So we had that idea back into back at the end of the 2018. 2019, we kind of do, let me call it a pre-work. So understanding how, what, where, and uh, and so on and so forth. And then uh, last January, uh, so uh, 2020, we established the company. Uh, we uh, raised a pre-seed investment of 100,000 uh, euros. And we opened office in Konas. And then, you know, the pandemic started and actually it accelerated our growth uh, multiple, by, by multiple uh, times. So, uh, so we, grew, we grew in Lithuania uh, pretty quickly. We, uh, uh, we uh, um, launched the product uh, back in September. Now we are successfully selling and growing in Lithuania and we are looking uh, how to enter multiple European markets starting uh, from this year. So. When you ask the question about English version, I actually we just actually released English navigation a few weeks ago, and we are working on English content uh, in Lithuania and through the partners abroad as well. Mm -hmm. So, but can you explain what what this application does actually? Because I opened it, so how I told you the interface is in English, but all the content in Lithuanian, so I couldn't understand what's going on there. I saw that there there are some podcasts, some videos, something, but what does actually it here. I tried to explain she's too young for you know having no I just I just want to hear normal explanation <laughs> yeah. all right so 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 there are a few things that our app does so in a nutshell we call it an e-trainer uh, mm -hmm. for the soft skill development and so basically it has uh, two main products one product is a training product another product is the assessment product so in terms of the training, there are three angles you can look into it. So first of all, if you think of the soft skill trainer, so B2B consultant who say, you know, before pandemic was working uh, with, a, uh, with a corporate clients, uh, mainly face to face. So you get the bunch of people in a two day seminar somewhere with nice coffee breaks and, you know, something in the evening in between. And you, you know, you and you train the soft skill, right? Uh, so that's so the way it was happening. Now, all what happened uh, um, now actually, you know, mixed all the cards. And basically what needs to do, we need to look for, you know, different ways to interact with the audience through digital channels because you just cannot meet. And just putting all of your slides online does not make it effective. You know, once I'm in the, you know, in the room with the, bunch of people training them, nobody stands up and leaves. So I would say also the completion is like literally 99.9%. .9%. Now, if you dump a bunch of content online and say, and, and tell to the same group, now go and learn, what happens is that, you know, industry uh, data says that completion rate is 5 to 15%. You know, it's equal to, you know, uh, eight, nine people out of 10 stands up and goes away. Like, sorry, bye. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so so basically what we are looking for is we are looking for an efficient format how to help the trainer to kind of uh you know to communicate with the audience through the digital channel so that's the one angle to look at it if i'm look from the company's perspective what's happening is if i'm say the decision maker hr head of the company or the department head and i want to train my people i know what i need to uh, like, I know I have a budget. I'm not probably sure what I need to, what are the skills that I need to prioritize and stuff like that. What we do is, you know, there are two products, right? So first of all, we can do the soft skill assessment. It's called the 360 feedback tool. And it, which basically means that you assess yourself, say, I want to assess my organization on five competencies, leadership, motivation, blah, 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 blah. Right. So I set up the tool where I assess myself. Then my manager assesses me, my peers assesses me, and then uh, my um, managees assess me. So basically, I get then the report of how I think about myself, 
And how about all of the other stakeholders think about me? So this is why it's called 360 uh, feedback tool. And you know, then you can you can basically see two trends uh, coming from that. One is in some cases you think you're bad in something, while everybody sees you're good at something. So it may it probably means you need to just kind of uh, get more confident about how you deliver or perform in a particular thing or in a particular situation. And kind of a, you know, you you get that motivation, you you improve yourself quickly. In some other cases, you might think you are super cool and amazing in something, while everybody else actually says not exactly. And so basically, you know, this is also some kind of a wake up call. Maybe there is some plan that we need to put in place to get you better in this and this and that area. And after some time, reassess again and kind of see how you develop. Right. So this part is assessment, which we do. And on the other hand side. We also then, you know, which is I talked, so those trainers, uh, experts in particular fields who create that content that we put into our app using our micro learning efficient and effective methodologies, then, you know, we also, uh, we also provide those trainings to, uh, to those people based on the needs, you know, personalized based on the needs. And so they can improve particular skills. The most popular skills today probably would be things like uh, stress management. Uh, and similar, you know, given the uh, given the given the environment and uh, and all that, you know, social distancing uncertainty and stuff like that. And so then, you know, so 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 then the third angle to look at it would be from the employee point of view, right? So I'm an employee. I'm in the corporation. I used to get face to face training once a year. Well, did I learn something? Yes, I did. Was it consistent? And did I learn everything I wanted? Well, of course not. Could I have more more of those kind of a trainings? In some cases, probably yes. In some cases, probably it's too expensive. And 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 this is how then you know we can pretty cheaply, uh, you know, uh, train uh, users or employees on way many more topics. Say you know with with the same budget, probably you can do four or five x, uh, and kind of a do uh, you know have a win win win. So 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 that's what Emotica pretty much does. We are a win for the trainer. Who wants to and uh, who wants to engage with his audience? You know, he used to do that face to face. Now on the digital channel, we are a win for the decision maker uh, for the company who wants to train their uh, workforce because we are way cheaper. We are consistent. Uh, we are continuous. We are effective. And then from the user as well, he can you know he can basically get the personalized offering and do it at his own pace. When he needs it, and also collaborating with other, with other teams, uh, with other members of the team, uh, when he needs it as well. Can you explain a little bit more? Maybe I didn't understand it fully, but uh, you told about those kind of lectures, for example, how to cope with stress or something. How it looks like? Is it just a lecture? Is it like a I don't know, workshop? Is it like a call? Or is it like a therapy? Or what is it? How does it look like exactly? I think the closest way to think of what we are trying to achieve is to is to is to really make it, uh, you know, as close as possible to the. You know, <laughs> my 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 assistant is kind of interrupting me now. It's She's okay. welcome to join us. <laughs> so, yeah. So so she disagrees probably with what I say. I need to just uh, you know, marketing <laughs> slogans and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah. So basically, it's. We want to make it as close as as the as, as the training in the auditorium. However, you know, kind of a, a consistent and efficient. So, so the way it works is you usually have some content, which is basically, you know, some audio lecture, uh, some uh, some video lecture, some text. Uh, then, so basically, you can you know get the con you you can consume different the content uh, via the different formats. Then there are there is some testing element into it because one of the most efficient or effective learning methods is testing. So we usually after you consume some content, we ask some questions. So basically to just check how did you how did you do that. Then there are some uh, cases where we ask for your reflection, right? So what did you what did you learn? How did you understood? Like so, just basically answer some questions to yourself, some personal stuff, so that you know by thinking of it and writing it. You can better reflect of what was happening, and then in some cases we have things like you need to work with the other members of your team. So we have a community area where you can chat and talk with your colleagues. 
We also have things like peer review, where basically, you know, sometime, sometimes there are the, uh, there are some tests where you are asked to uh, where where you ask to answer some question, and then it goes directly to your colleague, and your colleague can evaluate you and give his point of view. Uh, then we also have some stuff where you know uh, sometimes you can connect also with the lecturer himself. Um, some in some cases in some kind of a group sessions, uh, we can also talk on the face to face sessions. Also depends on the uh, on the, on the on the company by company needs. So it's kind of a it's more of a I think the efficiency will come and an effectiveness will come to make it as close as close to the you know a stand like as close to the face to face lecture as possible. However, enabled um, you know, via the digital format, and we are experimenting a lot. Like we are literally experimenting every single week, running the focus groups with users, with decision makers, with consultants th themselves on how to uh, how to make that. Sorry for no, the long answer, but I hope no, that, no. That, that helps. No, no, it's okay. So this is how you keep the retention, because before you said that like uh, in online people are kind of like leaving the classroom because they, well, obviously people don't like to study online because physically they cannot go away from the lecture. So this is the ways how you keep retention of people that they would stay or other, like something else. Yeah, no, that's. I think that's a great observation. Uh, that's that's exactly what plays into. I think that the, the ideal way would be to measure the impact to the organization, but it's super difficult. Like, what is the ROI of me spending X dollars on the subject with that team? Like, nobody has the nobody has the the perfect way to measure. But say the uh, the interim metric to measure that would be the completion rate. Which is pretty mm -hmm. obvious. Face to face is like ninety nine percent. E learning is five to fifteen percent, and so micro learning as a format, which Emotic as a platform is, bridges this gap in the in the middle. So today we have our completion rate of uh, fifty five, which means oh. like fifty five percent of of users who starts the training completes it, and then we are aiming to get to eighty. Uh, so yes, in short, right. the, you know, engagement is actually itself a kind of a very uh, huge topic. But we are our bet is if we keep the focus on that, we'll be able to achieve that. I'm listening to you, and I sort of can relate to many things. I've been working in corporations at Unity, then at King, so like for, for 12 years, and we did have the 360 reviews and everything you sort of mentioned. I did experience that during, the, during uh, my career, but it has always been some creepy HR tool and in the desktop. Yeah. And you're offering a mobile app, something that use, usually is associated with super short sessions. So why why a mobile app? How is it better to do this to do learning using your mobile instead of having this on the computer? So in general, if you think of it, I think like the way we think of it is that future is mobile. If you look at the last five years. Um, uh, everything that was prior to, you know, in the web is moving to the uh, uh, to mobile. Like now, there is an app for everything, and, for, and it's probably for the reason. So, so I think we are getting there as well. And then, if you think of what is, uh, I think it also like the big part of it is also related to micro learning as such. I think, you know, I, I hear the keyword that you mentioned of kind of a short sessions, right? Like the bite-sized information. How do you use it? It's not always you get on your table with your laptop and then start doing something. No, I mean, we have customers where they are kind of saying that, you know, I'm actually training myself when I go on the smoke breaks. I get there, open an app for three minutes while I'm smoking. I go through kind of, a, you know, one piece of a lesson. And, and and that's exactly the reason, you know, the, it enables to train you anywhere you want, anytime. And so the concept of learning on the go is a very powerful uh, tool once you really provide users, you know, with the relevant information at the right time. And this is also, uh, and this is also our bet. I think we differentiate ourselves from quite a lot of other platforms because we are 
not mobile first, but we are mobile only. We don't have a desktop version. Okay. Um, I want to ask something, but I forgot. <laughs> but, but Vera, but not really. Did the speech work on you? I mean, since you're a Zoomer, like m mobile phone is how you see the world, is how you pretty much interact with the world. Uh, did this speech work on you? Would you like to train using a mobile app well, using I small think, sessions? Uh, yes, I agree. Because, for example, when you've been, uh, when you said about the this old project about the Motica, you said as example as uh, Duolingo, something like this, that it's like a really portable thing and like. Well, I'm not going to a desktop version of Duolingo to learn some language because it's very easy to learn it on mobile it's very portable and f you get fast information so i think it makes sense it makes a lot of sense so but my question was other one i remembered it <laughs> so my question is uh why did you start from lithuanian market like i understand because you're native here but uh, still you understand it. it's like pretty small market here yeah that's, that's why that's <laughs> is yeah, it like that's... the like Lithuania is a test bunny for your product to go <laughs> for the future or how, uh, why? Yes, it is. Let me expand a little bit, but you know, and that, that, that's true. I mean, uh, that's very true. Like if you think about, you know, the, I'd say, you know, I'm coming from the product management background, right? And I think that, you know, once you do something truly innovative and truly new, uh, the first goal that you have is to find the product market fit. So if you want to find the product market fit and be efficient in doing that, because, you know, all every startup has the, you know, resource constraints, right? You just have that much money to spend. And if you're not going to make anything, you're not going to show any traction. Well, not going to end up well. Uh, um, so, so I think for us, doing that in Lithuania, was minimizing the risk for a few reasons. First of all, we are locals with Darius in the market. Darius is a great expert of the B2B sales and the training with 20 years of experience uh, in this market. And so, you know, for us, it was just least risky first step to go to come here, demonstrate, you know, launch the app, demonstrate the product market fit and go broader from here. And that's exactly right. what we are doing. Uh but then, I mean, look at her. I mean, she's Gen Z. It's very easy to upsell an app to her. But I assume when Darius goes to some um, older person in a big corporate organization and says, you, you know, like, pay, pay for getting an, a mobile app by, instead of like a huge HR solution. So how does it work? How 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 do you convince people that a mobile app is what they want to buy for their corporation? So I think one thing that, that I mean, of course, we knew that we will we will need to go through 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 quite of a process, right, to do that stuff. But to be honest, it, it surprised us positively in a way that, first of all, I think one other thing that I forgot to mention: Lithuania is a very innovative country. There are just few countries in Europe where you would say people are really digitally savvy. And so Lithuania is one of those few. So I think we also had a good advantage of going into the market, which is curious on, of trying new things, comparing to some to actually many other markets. Mar mar and then getting back to your question on how did we convince, I think it's all about uh, just try and, and 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 see how it works for you, right? So we believe that it, it's going to work. We we you know we spend a lot of time effort expertise and all that to develop the methodology content wise and and technology wise uh, as well and the way it worked uh is basically and the way it works today uh the way we go to market is basically we go to the clients and say get like what is your need okay your need is this and that get that this and that module for a week or two weeks just to try out with some of your team and see it by yourself and what happens is that People tries, they see, you know, they come like you basically they come with completely different um thoughts versus what they had before, and then and then they do the purchase. So technically, 
even though you know there are some uh, stereotypes, right? There are older people who would will, who will be not willing this, this, and that. Once they try it, if you give them sufficient uh, kind of information and onboarding how to do stuff, some of them, you know, are not confident in, in, enough. They're gonna know how to do. They're gonna know how to handle. But since the stuff is intuitive itself. You know they like it. Uh, they try it and they like it. And uh, and apparently, then you know it's it's a good value for money. If you think about what you could do with the same budget face to face, you could train four times more people. You know, with our app. And while we're talking about the sales, you have a podcast. You do lots of conferences. Like even even now. Uh, there is a live session happening on Emotica's Facebook page with 82 people yes. watching. So congrats on doing that, on still being able to to attract attention. And Emotica has a YouTube channel with uh, lots of lots of information there, lots of recordings, lots of things. So does it work for you? Does it add uh, additional value that you have all this free information, all the buzz going around you? And then you mentioned the word community multiple times. So if you, if the community and basically you're operating as a media company instead of e-learning company, does it help you do the business? Yeah, of course it does. I think, so, so I, I think I, I, I I want to step. I want to get one step back, and I think in general, when you think what we are trying to achieve is, we are trying to achieve two things. One thing is really we are trying to make organization learning, uh, you know, assessment and learning effortless and effective. But the other thing that we are trying to achieve is we want to uh, to make that information available and accessible by everyone, which means it needs to be either on a very good price point, or it needs to be free. And while you know the app has the premium content, which is paid, and you know that's how you do innovation, that's how you do business. We also have a lot of free, very good quality content. And you know, I um, I can tell that because I can see our engagement rates, and you know, like even the newsletter uh, open rates. You know, all of those articles, everything. Uh, we provide a lot of free quality content because it's needed. And I think once you have that balance between there are a lot of like when you when you are focusing on the value first and the business second, it gives the results. So people uh, tried liking and following us because they found our content you know very interesting. And you know as you see in the YouTube channels or in the podcast, right? There are like one hour long sessions and there are so many of them and as you said we are even running one now and it's going to be uploaded there as well for those who are not able to see it live so we we are continue we're continuously going to do that so and that really helps because then you know sometimes like if people don't know what emotica is sometimes it's enough for them to see our you know facebook uh, youtube or linkedin channels and try that some of that content for free once they try it, they understand that's a very good quality content. And if they, you know, relate to that, if they have those problems, then we are, then they talk to us. How can we help better solve them? And then we we sell our premium content, which is app. But how does it work? So uh, obviously, I mean, you can't rely that the decision makers watch this um, this content. Probably it's an employee finds this video and watches and then does the employee goes to their boss how do they sell you to to that corporation well you know like you know i think i i think what you said are are those options right or, or those things that are happening right so i would not isolate right if you think about the strategies there is a top down and bottom up top down is that you know you sell directly to the decision maker and then you know he purchases he or she does the decision uh, to purchase for the organization and stuff like that. So that happens when when you know our decision when decision makers get engaged with us through our you know digital channels. So we have those which are visible, but at the same time we also have professionals clubs like we have the uh, 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 let's say club or the, we call it Emotica Inside. So we have insider club for the uh, for the management, for the negotiations, and for HR uh, um, function. 
where you know we we gather uh, in some closed groups and we do some particular talking there. But we also have a lot of open uh, open ones. So so this is from the decision maker point of view. And the other strategy, as as you correctly said, is the is the is the bottom up. Uh, so basically, you know, when all of the rest sees that, they can even actually download the app, purchase a module for like 40 or 50 euros, um, uh, and then kind of even even try it out, and then they can refer to their decision makers that this is something good to check it out. So so it works both ways. And how do you find the experts like for your videos? Where did you get them? So these are these are the uh, top B two B trainers. Uh, local B2B trainers. So in Lithuania, we're working with uh, those people who are working and training those organizations on the soft skills for the last, you know, five, 10, 15 years, depending, uh, you know, on their uh, on their experience. And they find it very useful to move some of that content uh, online. So then they can focus on some other stuff to, uh, to kind of uh, uh, increase the effectiveness of, the, of, of their training. I'll give you one example. So there is a trainer who was doing same one or two day lecture like nonstop for the last five or 10 years. It's super popular. It's working for him or her. I'm not going to expose. And then, but like they're doing that 10 years and they are talking the same every single time they meet the group. So why don't they put that, you know, they record that into our effective format, put it in the platform, and then they don't need to do that anymore. They can then focus on some additional stuff, how to even make sure that their audiences are, you know, getting that, um, like consuming that information even more effectively. At the same time, one of the other things that the consultants uh, prefer is that they can get the constant revenue stream because we have our sales force and we are selling to many more clients that they would not have access to, uh, you know, we're selling their content as well. So we are also ensuring if they're do, if they're going to do a good job creating the cre- creating the training, we are ensuring that you know they're going to start getting passive revenues for that. Uh, so look, Lera, we have time for just one more question. Do we talk about the community or do we talk about the, how to get the best, how to attract the best teachers and track the best uh, community? Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> then ask. No, you ask. I took all the time today, so go. Yeah, but it was magnificent. I enjoyed it. People watching us, did you enjoy your taking all the time today? Uh, there is a comment button somewhere. Use that. Uh, but, uh, Carlos, uh, here's the last question for you before we jump off the record in the People channel. Uh, the question for you is the following. You mentioned the community multiple times and uh, there is a trend of, there is a new term, like a fancy word, education 3.0, where the community is the, the core part of online education. Is it that thing? Are you talking about education 3.0 with community being the the value, like the core of, the core product of e-learning? Or when you're saying the community, you're thinking about something else? The answer is uh, both. So the short answer is both. And then the longer answer is, um, so if you think about, you know, 3.0, I, I'd rather think of community, uh, about the community in terms of micro learning. So community learning is, you know, one of the, one of the techniques of the micro learning as well, which is saying that, you know, it increases the effectiveness because you also, you know, you feel accountability once, for example, you're learning together with somebody or you need to deliver something together. You know, me is studying at Stanford now. There is a lot of community learning there as well. So apparently for the reason. So, uh, so I think one uh, one reason is that community learning is really uh, uh, driving the engagement and effectiveness of training. So we do that in our, uh, we have that in our, uh, you know, uh, training in the in the app. On the other hand side, we also look at the community as a broader thing, right? And when you say, you know, when you hear all of those things, like, you know, we, we have, we have like, I think I know by now probably like 12 or 13,000 followers on Facebook, you know, a couple of one and a half thousand, a bit more maybe on LinkedIn. 
uh, we have like probably 3,000 or, or, or more subscribers uh, for our newsletters and then those clubs. These together are also a community. And what we do is we are trying to provide relevant free content to them through different you know, uh, platforms like, uh, like YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, conferences, uh, closed discussions, and many other things. And so our goal is to, first of all, look at the community as a broad thing and try to provide them value, then get the triggers and understanding what type of the content is the bigger value and what type of a content they want more. And then we are actually going into the app, premium product. We are building that custom uh, um, unique content via the best trainers. And we also engage with the community as part of training you know, to to, engage, uh, to increase the engagement uh, and completion rates, which microlearning, uh, you know, uh, clearly defines that it's it's a best practice. So that's how we look into it. Uh, it's, it's, I know it pleases my heart, I guess, Lara's heart too, since, I mean, we're so much into community, we have a separate community show and, and let's actually jump off the record and talk about the... Talk more about the community, talk more perhaps um, about the scaling that to the non-Lithuanian speaking countries. And we're gonna do it here in people. So people watching us, you can do it too. But Karelis Lera, let's click on people and meet there in just a second. And yeah. that will be off the stream. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye, everybody. See you in people. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Cheers.